Peter, how do you adapt and adjust to virology? Yeah. Um, with great difficulty, as I think you can see from the market pricing. I mean, basically, we don't know very much. Uh, we know there's a problem. Uh, we don't know how virulent it is or what the spread will be. Uh, nor do we know, obviously, what the long-term implications will be, or even the short-term implications for the Chinese economy. So I think that given all of that, uh, markets are simply saying, look, we've had a great run. Uh, it probably is a good time to take some risk off the table, take some profit. We'll sit this one out. Uh, and we'll come back potentially at some point in, in the future. Um, the trouble is we don't know how long we're going to be out of the market for. We don't know how far the market will fall before uh, things turn around. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an exceptionally difficult time, and I think investors are simply just taking the, the shortest route, which is out. Peter, down 2 or 3%. Maybe we'll be down 4 or 5%. Who knows? That's not even a correction. Have we become completely immune to understanding and studying corrections or, heaven forbid, a tangible bear market? Um, yes, I think that's a very good question, actually. I mean, how many times have, we, have I sat in this chair over the years and said, um, you know, markets look to be overpriced and markets still continue to rise? Um, yeah, I think it's a very good point. You know, we, we have forgotten, perhaps we've forgotten the fundamentals, but that's perhaps because the fundamentals aren't what they were. I mean, we're, we're living in a market which has been... Uh, given life support by central bank liquidity for, for many, many years, and there are no signs of that turning around. Um, and as so long as um, you know, central banks remain in the game, absent any significant shocks, uh, such as this one, which turns into something you know, much worse, um, there's no real reason to expect equities to completely fall off a cliff.